Hey everybody, I'm Michael. This is a review for Sammy Keys and the Art of Deception. It's book number eight in the Sammy Keys series. Just finished reading it. It's due back at the library in like three hours. So I, I just barely finished reading the book on time. It was really good. I really like this. This has got to be one of my favorites of the series. Probably a nine out of ten or a ten out of ten. Uh, the last few books in the series have been kind of dark, especially that last one, which was all about gangs and kidnapping and uh, teenage pregnancy. And wasn't there was one about uh, drugs, drugs. There was this guy <laughs> doing a, a, a drug lab. And so this one is actually like a G-rated mystery. This one is uh, like something you'd expect to see in one of those old Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys books. Now there were there were drugs in one of the Hardy Boys books. They did they did stop people who were selling drugs, but that's besides the point. That's besides the point. Um, it, it, it was nice to have just a nice kind of friendly, not so serious mystery, more of a humorous book. You, you know me, I love humorous stuff, right? So this this is sort of the mystery that's right up my alley. Um, Something which really impressed me, I don't think I've mentioned this in my other reviews, is just how well-written Sammy's character is. She just has great narration. It's, it's really interesting. I love her snarky comments and, and just all her funny jokes just peppered everywhere. Like, she she could narrate pretty much anything. I'd, I'd like to see, it, it doesn't necessarily have to even be a mystery. Just like her going through her everyday life, that's just interesting to me so I, I really do like just her um i just like her narration it's great and uh, especially funny uh with, with this book she she goes to uh an art she goes to like an art show because she has to do it for art class she doesn't really like it and like it's one of those art shows where they they have like a blob of orange paint on the wall and they say it costs nine thousand dollars and sam was like what she just threw a thing of orange paint on a canvas and says it's eight thousand, nine thousand dollars. How how do you get away with that garbage? <laughs> Sammy's not shy about her feelings, and I I thought that was really funny. Actually, I I am one of those people who did not take the art class, which explained why that stuff actually counts as art. My sister did, and she she gets a little snobby about it because she's like. Oh, you just don't understand why Picasso is great. And I'm like, yeah, I don't understand. It looks like a bunch of weird squiggles to me. <laughs> so, um, uh, that, so it, uh, there's also a Renaissance fair, which I thought was interesting too, because I've never really, I've never been to a Renaissance fair. I don't really know much about these things, but, um, yeah, it's interesting. And, uh, Casey, that's, uh, Sammy, not her boyfriend, but the guy, no, she doesn't like him, but, um, the guy she somehow gets worked up over all the time. <laughs> He's at the Renaissance Fair and he kisses her on the hand, m'lady, like that. And so Marissa obviously has to brag about it. <sighs> Marissa, why? I like Marissa a lot better in this book than the previous book where she was really a, a, a scaredy pants as was whining and complaining the whole time. Uh, here she has more of a proactive role, definitely more of a, a best friend. And so Marissa goes bragging about that to uh, Heather and that, that, that's the school storyline. Heather, Heather's really mad because her brother Casey kissed Sammy on the hand at a Renaissance fair. And so what Heather does is she gets the class clown to pay a lot of attention to Sammy and then give her a big old kiss on the cheek right when her brother is there to, to make it seem like Sammy's got a boyfriend. And I, I really like um, Graham's comments like, wow, Heather really doesn't know what's going on. She's just driving Sammy and Casey closer together, right? Uh, like Heather thinks she's breaking them apart, but actually they're, they're coming closer together. And Sammy resents that accusation, but uh, Grams has got a good point when she's like, well, you're all worked up about him multiple nights in a row, uh, having to call him in the middle of the night. You wouldn't be doing this if Heather hadn't interfered. And so um, the conclusion is that Casey, once again, comes to like Sammy's rescue. I wouldn't say comes to Sammy's rescue. Sammy's doing okay with herself. Uh, Sammy's trying to be more mature and not getting into fights with Heather, which is nice. She's kind of grown beyond that. But, uh... <laughs> Casey sort of comes to her rescue, Sammy's rescue, by humiliating Heather. They, they, 
the theater group puts on this ridiculous play. I, I didn't think it was all that funny, but several reviewers thought it was hilarious. So, you know, I guess it's funny. And uh, they just put on this silly comedy play where the class clown, who's more than willing to help get revenge on, on Heather, because he probably feels bad about being her flunky. Um, so he he screams he has to kiss a codfish, and, and then he chases her all around the the, the theater, and it, it, they're just calling her a codfish, which is a joke. It reminds me of the Peter Pan movie where they all sing, Hook is a codfish. Hook is a codfish. And uh, the other, like, one of the other major stories is uh, Graham's has romance drama, which I really liked. I liked how Graham's and Sammy are better together. Like, Sammy's keeping her promise and never to lie to Graham. So, like, I'm surprised. It really does feel like a turning point in her relationship with Graham's. I, I thought it would be something that the, you know, that was something that came at the end of the last book, right? I thought it would be forgotten. I had totally forgotten about it, and I only read the last book a month ago. Well, um, Sammy and Graham's are really closer together than ever, and uh, Graham's has romance drama with Hudson because Hudson likes this other woman because she's got gorgeous Liz Taylor eyes. <gasps> and so he's always defending the gorgeous woman, and that makes Graham's mad because, you know, her, her boyfriend should not be talking up to other women. And, and that, that, that drama just keeps going. And it, it's interesting because Sammy's kind of caught in the middle because she likes Graham's and she likes Hudson, but she is more on her grandmother's side sort of like she sammy gets in sammy tries to like talk to them multiple times and she kind of gets into a fight with hudson when she calls him old and uh, i mean she wasn't trying to say he's old but he's offended now and yeah so i really did like uh i like that drama i liked the the ideas it, it ties into the book's theme about deception and art which um, works well. I mean, the title is Art of Deception, and that's not just art as in painting. It's also, you know, the skill of fooling other people because we, Sammy's encountered a bunch of people who lied in the past and try to hide who they really are, and that's exactly the case, which is uh, with, the, with this mystery, but also it's, it's the case with artists. How much can you tell uh, from an artist, about an artist, based on the art that they create? Similarly, how much can you tell about a person's real identity based on the things they say or the things they do? And that's sort of the theme that goes through it. And it, it just made me really thoughtful when they're getting into a fight because it's like, well, Grams hates the artist. I mean, she hates this Diane woman. So she naturally um, doesn't like her art. Whereas Hudson, he really likes the woman. And so he really likes her art. And Sammy seems to be in the middle where she likes the art. She really likes the one painting, um, but she doesn't like the artist all that much. And then all of her statues are really terrible. And I've sort of like ignored the mystery. A really important, not important, but kind of big exciting scene at the start of the book where somebody breaks into the art museum and tries to hold it up and they have a squirt gun. Sammy realizes it's not a real gun, it's a squirt gun. Sammy tackles the guy and the guy manages to escape. He tried to steal all of Diane's paintings and that's why Diane, Diane started fainting and she was a damsel in distress and needed to be saved by a Hudson. And you know, is that real or is that just pretending? In the same way, um, Tess, that's the woman who does the, the, the orange blot painting, and she's really snobby about the paintings, which are just random scribbles. Um, like, in the same way, does she actually believe her stuff is real, or is she just pretending that it's art? And she refuses to talk about it. To, actually, all the artists refuse to talk about it. Uh, the third suspect is not one who comes into play very often. I think he shows up twice. Uh, he, he does some other paintings at the gallery, and, and that's it. Apparently, there are only three artists in this particular gallery. Um, the art gallery owner is uh, like Sammy, like Sammy a lot. She foiled a heist, so, um, you know, he's friendly. And basically, as, as the case develops... Man, do I want to go into spoiler territory? Okay, the rest of this is going to be spoilers, okay? So, uh, the, the culprit the culprit is uh, Diane's brother. Diane's brother, 
who thinks that he should have inherited those paintings, and so he tried to steal them because they're, they're worth money and he tries to sell them. Well, it turns out the paintings weren't actually drawn by Diane, they were drawn by uh, her father, Dwayne. She changed Dwayne to Diane, just changing one letter. That's why she sort of stopped being called Elizabeth and started calling herself Diane. And the book built up this clue. I knew that was what was going to happen, but I, I guessed wrong. So I thought, well, her real name's Elizabeth, and Bess is short for Elizabeth, and Tess is the woman who does the other painting. So I thought, Tess and Bess, we switch out the T for the B. That's, that's what I thought was going to be the thing. I thought that was going to be the trick, but no, the, the trick was actually that um, Diane... Uh, <laughs> Diane was uh, plagiarizing her father. So I get half points for solving the mystery, not full points. Darn, I didn't get full points. Ugh. It, it's good. I want to read the next book in the series. I, I, I hope the others are just as good as this one, and I'm, I'm sure they are because the series has been pretty good so far. So those are basically my thoughts on Sammy Keys and the art of... That's my dog. Sorry. Um, okay, I, I have to end this and take care of the dog. Bye, everybody. Here's a picture of Luna the dog. She was barking because somebody shut a door upstairs, and she thought there could be a burglar in the house. So that's why she was barking so much. Either that or she didn't like my book review.